I am Michelle Ruiz, and you are? I am Catherine. Hello, everyone. I am Essie. Hi. Alina. Hi, everyone. And I'm Raquel. And Hello. together, we, we are, are one. So welcome to our Together We Are One Women's Talk Show. We are super excited about having you join us on this Sunday afternoon. I apologize. We tried recording earlier, and apparently there was no uh, voice. So now, hopefully, you will hear our voices. Amen. 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 And so this month of um, de the month of December, we're going to be speaking about rejection. Let me tell you a little bit about Together We Are One. Together We Are One is about equipping, educating, empowering women to let them know that they are not alone in whatever situation they're going through. Right? Women have been feeling silent, depressed, anxious. A worry, a worry, afraid. They feel like they don't know where to go to. They feel like they don't know who to talk to because of all the pain, all the hurt that has been in their heart. And so God said to me, spoke to me at the beginning of this year, I want you to start a woman's talk show to be real, raw, and transparent, just like my word, right? So we're not talking church here right now, but we are going to be talking truth. We're going to be talking the truth because the truth will set us free. The truth is what's going to be able to heal us. Although a lot of times we don't want to go to those dark places, but we have to face those dark places in order for them to come out to the light. That's what's going to bring us into becoming hopeful, right? Because a lot of women, through all their pain, rejection, trauma, you know, molestation, rape, divorces, grievances, through all those situations, those are the things that keep us into captivity. They paralyze us, right? They make us lame. We're full of pain. We're full of shame. So together we are one. What we're going to do, right, through our panel and through other guest speakers is to be able to share with you, not only talk about it, but through the testimonies of our guest speakers, be able to teach you how to heal from that hurting heart and then provide you with the tools that you need so that you can move forward to a bigger and better and brighter future, okay? So today our guest speaker is Kathy and Ka Catherine, and she's gonna share with you what she experienced as a child. We're gonna be covering child rejection because we all have issues as an adult, we all have uh, testimonies, we all have a story, but all of that stems from our childhood, somewhere, somehow, right? And then it grows bigger. And unfortunately, it grows worse. So the hope is, the goal, is to be able to bring um, us from out of the dark into the light and from being hopeless to hope. Amen? So here's Catherine. Catherine, tell me, how are you doing? Uh, I am well, and I thank you for uh, inviting me on the show. Um, the topic is rejection, as you said. And the first <coughs> memory of my rejection um, for childhood was I was trying to articulate to my mom at about age 10, I think, maybe 9, 10, somewhere around there, um, that a family member uh, touched me inappropriately and basically it was molestation, but at that age I didn't know that word, um, nor did I know any other words to use to articulate, plus I was feeling all these emotions of embarrassment and how could this happen and, you know, it's it was every holiday for like several years. Um, and I was just really embarrassed. Um, and all I wanted was my mom. And my mom was a great mom, not taking anything away from her. Um, God bless her. Um, but she just did not know how to take it in and handle it, at least from what I saw when I was trying to verbally discuss what was happening. And can you share with us a little more how did that, um, time and place, what was it for you when you went to go share with your mom and how, what was her reaction? Well, uh, well, first I have to say I come from an uh, Italian-American background, so everything is, you know, no feelings, brush it under the rug, um, you know, survival mode, you know, dad's always working and I'm always cooking and what do you want, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, but that's not to say that she didn't love me, it's just that's how it was. Right. Um, so, you know, the emotion part was lacking. And so the articulation part of feelings was also lacking at, upon my mom as an adult for whatever reason. But I, as a child, took it as, you know, 
the me, like what's wrong with me, and you know, I'm rejected, and you know, I, I, I'm forgotten, and all these years I was thinking that in my head to the point where, you know, I would rebel out, I wouldn't listen to the family rules, um, I would hang out, um, I would go out, I would always do the opposite of what my siblings were doing in the household. Rebellion. And when growing up, how was your uh, relationship with your mom because of that time? that you felt rejected and her not listening to your voice as a little girl? Um, I, looking back now, I realize that I was pretty angry. I was pretty angry. I actually, um, we lacked the calming, loving mother-daughter relationship. Um, it is better now um, because time heals all wounds, as they say, um, but I still deal with it. Um, she and I, it, it's hard to talk personable. You know, it's hard to hug. Um, it feels awkward. Do you feel it feels awkward because she never really gave you the time and day and, and showed you that she really cared about that moment when you were trying to cry out to her? Yes. And, and you know, um, I don't think she knew how to handle it. So her best thing was to give me time in the bathroom because she took me to the bathroom. So she said, well, what is it? Show me. And that was like another violation because, you know, I just, I was kind of like this, like, what do you mean? You know, and I was crying. Um, and I myself didn't know how to articulate it because of my age. Um, but growing up, I also took on the uh, emotional uh, lack of where I kept my feelings inside. Um, and, you know, it carried on into my relationships. Um, with the boyfriends that I had, choosing the wrong ones and choosing the ones that were abusive to me. So there was major consequences. Did you feel that why say anything to anybody about what I feel if, they're, they, if they don't care? My mom who mm -hmm. I was supposed to trust and be able to go to, I went to her and she shunned me, right? Because that's what happened. She shunned me. Yeah. So therefore, you probably felt rejected and why say anything to anybody if they're going to do the same thing and it's just going to hurt me more. Correct. Because you say that? Yes, because the, the, the major consequences were, um, I feel, it kind of put a damper on my relationship with my siblings. Um, I was kind of like, and this is how I took it, the outcast, um, the black sheep of the family, um, all those things where, you know, I just, the relationship with my siblings were weakened as well, I feel. Do you believe that the same thing happened to your siblings? Uh, I believe so, but when it was occurring with me, like I would just turn my head. And again, it was holiday time, so this is like a time where you're with family and, you know, it's supposed to be happy, jolly, you know, all that good stuff. Um, but it wasn't for me. Now, Essie, you hear what um, Catherine has been telling us. What are your thoughts on that? You know, when she said that she was young and she didn't have uh, words to articulate her emotions, it got me thinking about a conversation I had with a friend yesterday. I heard her little sister, who's four years old, in the background talking and trying to, trying to tell her sister something, but then she was laughing at her. And I asked her, why are you laughing? She was like, because she says funny stuff. And I was like, but you know, she's young. And, she doesn't have the vocab for it, so I feel like you should listen to her more. Right. And as she was speaking, I also thought to myself, like, a lot of parents don't really listen to their little children. Mm -hmm. They don't take that time to listen to them. So a lot of times, their children could be thinking something, feeling something, but because mom and dad don't really understand what I'm saying, it's like talking to a wall. You know, it's, 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 it's redundant. So the more and more that happens, the more and more close off they become because it's like, mm -hmm. even if I say it, they're not even going to understand what I'm saying. Right. So that creates that gap right. between parents and children a lot of times. Too. Yes. Mm -hmm. How about you, Alina? Um, I think rejection starts as we're in winter. Let me use a winter analogy. Yes. All right. So, we're outside and there's snow on the ground and you start with a little snowball and get that rolling down the hill and it picks up more snow, it picks up dirt, it picks up sticks, it picks up everything and it's going down the hill and it's getting bigger. So when we were young, rejection starts as a little snowball for us, right? And then we grow older and it picks up more rejection. It's something, it's almost like we attract 
rejection when we start young with it. So that when we, at a certain age when we grow up, it, it's just this great big ball of rejection that we can't really grasp. So it's, it's something that we have to tackle or get to the root of while we're young. And like as he said, young children really don't have the words to explain. Mm -hmm. I remember not having words to explain stuff to my grandmother and imagine being at that age and not being able to explain something of that magnitude, mm -hmm. right? It just builds and builds. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about you, Rebecca? You know, um, in the past generations, there's certain topics that are big taboo. And the touching, the molestation, that's a big taboo. Mm -hmm. Nobody was talking about it. Whether it, it you know whether it was in the school system, whether it was in, in, in government or even within the church, you know, or even at home, it was a big taboo. So it, it is much easier to sweep it under the rug, you know. Um, that generation didn't have the support that it should have had. You know, they didn't know where to go. There were no no understanding. How do you deal with something like this mm -hmm. when you know um, somebody is being accused, and then it could, it could become a he said, she said, you know, and it brings conflict. Mm -hmm. Then you get outcast. You know, so there's a lot to be involved in, um, and it is important that we do have <coughs> conversations now. Right. You know, um, it is good that we have this forum. You know to say, no, we can talk about it. Mm -hmm. Now we do have, I mean, there is a voice out there. Um, children are being given more of a voice, mm -hmm. you know, um, and it is a difficult thing, mm -hmm. it, but it is a taboo. Even in the midst of everything that, we're, that we have today, the resources that we have today, it is still a taboo. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, a forum like this, it's good that we're talking about it, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. Um, and yes, our parents, you know, that generation, yeah, they had a lot going on, you know, um, and we now have more to our, our disposal, at our fingertips, mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. sorts of, yes. you know what I'm saying, yes. programs and stuff to support. Back then, they didn't have that. Right. And then you bring in the culture, that's right. another part mm -hmm. right. that we, you know, take into account, you right. know. Um, so, yeah, just saying, you know, I put a roof over your head, mm -hmm. food on the table, and clothes in your back. Yeah, what else, what, what, what else, else do you want? Yeah, yeah. 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 And, yeah. It, and it's hard. It's yeah. hard. And, you know? and, 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 and to be fair to them, that that's their way of showing love. Right, right. You know, yes. so, yes. but there's, there was no emotional, you know, yeah. Come, yeah. Come, and, come and sit over here. Come on, tell me yeah. what's wrong. No acknowledgement. I think a lot, mm -hmm. um, the women, what we go through is no acknowledgement of what happened and not validating what happened. The same, Validation, yes. Hey, it was wrong. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The validation of it. Those were the words I was actually looking for. Yeah, it was wrong. Yeah. And, and that could be an, that's apology. That's an apology. Yeah, that's all it's, it's, You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To be validated and yeah. say that it was wrong. Mm -hmm. What happened to you? Yeah. I do have something. Just make, It's a question that I want to put out there. So, you know, I've, I have many, I have friends, you know, close friends. And one thing I've noticed with all my girlfriends is that all of us have been molested at some point in our lives, in our childhoods. The question is, a lot, and one thing, one common thing I've also understood amongst us is that we actually never really expressed it mm -hmm. to the older people in our families. We never told them about it because, you know, the whole topic about sex, I know it's, it's kind of breaching off the rejection, but it's along the... No, it's, it's, it's right. Same thing. Yeah. So it's like, the whole idea about sex and all those things, kind of, it's, it's a taboo talk. People don't really talk about it, don't really teach their children about it. So even when they're young girls, which a lot of us have gone through, are, going, are being molested by either older male cousins or uncles, and sometimes even their own fathers, you know, we don't talk about it because it's not, even like when we watch movies and we see something like that, we cover our eyes. So it's like, we, d we don't have that comfortability to be able to express ourselves to our parents. So what, would you guys agree with that? Like, what are your thoughts about that? As well? Yeah, absolutely. I think when you have an authority figure, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they sort of assume, you know, um, this role and this control, right? And you're not supposed to tell. Mm -hmm. And I know I've heard, you know, uh, women tell me, you know, no, don't tell so-and-so because they're not going to believe you. Mm -hmm. Or you're gonna get into trouble, mm 
-hmm. So it's sort of it's flipped back on you, just making well, you did something wrong, right? right. Yes. You know, right? Um, that's and so it, I think that's become a barrier when you have an authority figure, somebody who's older than you becomes an authority figure as a child, you know, um, let alone they have a title, an uncle, you know, or a father, like you said, okay? Um, so yes, it is a difficult thing when it comes in authority figure, and, and yes, and I think that is why it continues to happen. Mm -hmm. Right. Because the perpetrator knows how to manipulate the situation. Yeah. Yes. You get caught. So. Yes. Not only that, but you know, as I'm listening to you, a lot of times, unfortunately, because back then, I'm not saying now, and, and I shouldn't say not even just now, because even still today, there is a lot of ignorance out there. You would think that with all of the information, the technology that we have out there, people would know that there's resources. People would know that they have a voice, that they, they can go to someone. But because of that fear that yes. of them saying, you know what, this was my family member, I should have been able to trust them and I and I and and they right. did this to me. So how can I go outside of my family member and share with anybody else? Are they gonna hurt me too? I, and, and a lot of times it comes like these negative thoughts, right? Let's right. be realistic. Oh well, maybe you did something to them. What did you do to them? Right. Well, did you right. arouse them? Did you dress properly? Yeah. A lot of times they're gonna it's going to be like the covert abuser, right? The narcissist. They'll turn it around and say, no, I didn't. Well, why are you dressing like that? They'll make us feel like it's our fault. They'll make us feel like, you know, that we have to bear with the shame and the pain because we did something wrong. Mm -hmm. And then we come back to that feeling of rejection. Yeah. And like uh, Alina said, that ball, that snowball keeps growing bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. And what happens is if we don't talk about these, thing, these things, right, we feel that we're going to keep battling, it's going to go away, it will get better, but it truly doesn't. No. And what happens is that that will be passed on to your next generation mm -hmm. and the next generation. And so we don't want that happening to the next generation and the next generation. We want that through our conversations that it ends somewhere, right? Right. The goal of Together We Are One is so that the sick cycle stops, right? When does the bleeding stop? And so perhaps your mom was molested. And so that's why she doesn't say anything. In my 30s, I came to realize that. But I was molested when I was uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you know, for several years in that little mm -hmm. time frame. So um, teenage years, you know, there were big consequences because I would get into fights at school. I was angry because I didn't know. Um, how to articulate or express myself and I would just hold 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 everything in um, until I would just explode um, I also would fight with my sister physically all the time in the house uh, you know everything was well, what's wrong with her me and me you know um, I, I, and I did have an anger problem I absolutely did I was angry you know I wouldn't think that now <laughs> <laughs> I think we all um, can share, you know, and thank you so much, Essie, for sharing that because, you know, um, I know that this has never been heard or, or said, but the Lord brought to memory that I, too, had been molested when I was young by a family member. And it's something that I've never said to my family. I've never spoke. And um, I'm not embarrassed to, to share because this is part of healing for all of us. This is just, not just about, you know, sharing with you, and it's not to downfall anybody, but it's a process of healing for all of us. Mm -hmm. We're all gonna take something from this. We're all gonna learn something from this so that we can stop the bleeding, right? Not us, but through our conversations, through our testimonies, right. that we can teach you and tell you that it's okay to talk about it. It's okay to get some help. It's okay to, share right so let me get some tools that we can provide to you so that you don't keep bleeding so that it doesn't happen to your child so that when you see your child right if you have a child or a niece or nephew mm -hmm. if you see them that they're shunning away that right. something's not right that they're acting up that they're getting angry that they're bitter right it's not because 
they were born that way. It's because something has been done to them. And we have this um, perception in our mind, oh, it's HDHD, whatever you want to call it, right? Or, or, or it's, it's a bad behavior. Well, you know, yeah, if they're having... Root. There's a root. There's a root. Mm -hmm. and, and that root for you was rejection. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. And I just want to also say this. Um, if you have a daughter, um, and, and even a son, I mean... Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Niece, yeah. nephew. Yeah. Um, grandchild. Just, just really pay attention because this carried on in my life. I'm 42 now, and I'm just now being able to break it off of me. But... It basically took a, a toll on my timeline, on my blueprint of my of my life, um, and I was not aware of it. And you know, how do you recover time? You you can't. Um, thankfully, you know, I, I, I'm healthy, and you know, I didn't end up um, you know addicted to anything or, or in the streets or on drugs. But I did dabble. I'm gonna be very honest with you, right. you know, because after you're angry, you're okay. I I I have been so angry. Now what? Oh, okay. I'll, I'll I'll have you know some alcohol. Okay, yeah, I'll have some cigarettes. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. What is that? Okay, yeah. You know, because you feel like nothing matters, right? And you want to be numb sometimes. Yeah. Holiday times, you want to be numb, right? Because it brings you back to that mm -hmm. memory. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, it, I'm sorry, and no, then I'm, I'm on a roll now. Go ahead. And, go ahead. And that's what we want to hear, right? <laughs> and, then, and then the, um, you know, the boyfriends that I picked were very wrong, very abusive, um, you know, enticing me to, I was with my first boyfriend for six years. He enticed me to, to have sex. Um, and it, it was just horrible because he was abusive. He was verbally abusive, mentally abusive, but then yet yeah, everyone loved him. Would you say that... I was quiet about that too, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So would you say that those characteristics were similar to the COVID abuser, the one that molested you because everyone thought he was great, yet yes, behind doors, absolutely. that's how you relate to that? Absolutely. Right. So a lot of times, you know, a lot of times we have people that are in front of us seem to be so great and um, in front of our family yes, members, right? right? They, they carry right. this persona like... I'm the greatest thing, you know, I, I, I don't swear, I don't drink, um, I'm, I eat very healthy, but behind doors you're sleeping around, and I'm just, that's just an example, right? They're sleeping around, right. or, they're, or they're molesting, or they're doing these things, and then we, we're there with them, and everyone loves them, and then they think we're the problem. Right, they turn around on you. Mm -hmm. And that's what a covert abuser does. Mm -hmm. That, that right. reminds me of like the tree of good of not the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Like to Eve, it looked beautiful, but what that tree, this the fruit it produced, was what caused humanity to be doomed. So it's like for a person right. to like show themselves in such a beautiful manner, but like if you actually have a taste of their fruits, it's right. very toxic to you. Right, right. And so the piece about getting angry, I hit back. So I was abused, abused yes, but I hit back. Um, and it was at a point where, you know, police were involved. Um, I had to go to court. I had to sit on the, the stand with a black eye. And this was before domestic violence laws turned, um, when was it? I think sometime in the 90s. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, right? The 90s, early mm -hmm. 90s. Yeah. Um, so this was before those domestic laws came into play in the state of Connecticut. So I had to sit on the stand with a black eye and explain my story to you know, uh, strangers in the court and the judge, and they couldn't do anything about it because it wasn't domestic violence. Wow. Yeah, because um, I, him and I didn't live together. I was too young. I was um, 18, 19. We didn't live together. We didn't have a child together, and we weren't married. Wow. So he got away with it. OJ. So that yeah. goes to show, right, that even today we still have a lot of people that go through these situations, right? A lot of women and men, men too, because men, a lot of men feel a sense of rejection from their moms, right? And a lot of times, for whatever reason, the mom is working too much. Um, a lot of men feel rejection because the father's not home, so the father must have not loved them. The mom has too many jobs, or she's trying to kill her pain by being distracted out there. They feel rejected, and the way they 
sometimes lash out is they, they go into drugs or they go into drinking or they go into abusive. Right. But this just goes to show just from a simple, um, not a simple ripple, like you said, with the snowball. And so it's very crucial that we talk about these things. This is how we are going to heal. This is how we will become whole, is by discussing these conversations. Because again, we can no longer keep silent. It's important for us to come out into the light with everything that's been hidden in the dark. Because the truth is, right, we know for us that, um, that believe and are in the Lord Jesus Christ, that we're Christians, you know, and this show is for everyone. So please know this show is, it's a woman's talk show, but we, we're not discrediting anybody. What we're saying is, for us who are believers, right, the Lord wants to bring everything that is hidden in the dark into the light, because that's how we heal. And what happens is that the enemy wants us to keep our mouth quiet. Yes. He wants us to feel rejected. He wants us to feel neglected. Mm -hmm. Because if he can keep us silent, then he will continue to torment our mind, mm -hmm. which will come then the anger, the resentment, the bitterness, the unforgiveness, right? And then instead of running away from that toxic relationships, unfortunately we're attracted, attracted to those relationships. Right. Although we don't like it and we don't want it, mm -hmm. but that's the that's what we were showing to. Yeah. That's what you're showing to. You're thinking, okay, this is what it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. right? And the rejection underneath it, like it says, okay, this is what I'm I'm supposed to be doing, right? I'm not going to get anything better, yeah. right? This is what, this is the first one that I had. Everything else is going to be like that. Mm. So, without getting to how should I say, without cutting the root of rejection when it starts, right? without having the words to say. And I'm putting my age out there, um, 42. When I was growing up, my um, I didn't have somebody saying, these are the words that, that says, this is what you're, ha this, you're happy. This is right. how, you, how you say when you're feeling sad. This is what you say when right. you're angry. Mm -hmm. Those words were not taught, right? So when I grew up and I heard somebody say, oh, I'm so excited, I'm like, oh, okay, right? So without being taught what the feeling is, you can't really explain it. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that parents should teach their children what words are, like how they're feeling, get them to understand what the feeling is so that they can be able to explain it yeah. and that helps cut the root of rejection it helps so uproot it correct so that we can get rid of it yes. right mm -hmm. um it's funny because this is the word that the lord gave me for the month of december which is rejection so immediately i called my daughter right and i said okay did you ever feel rejected by me did i did you ever feel like you didn't matter did you ever feel like I pushed you to a side, that you were ignored, that you were not loved enough? I said, did you ever feel rejected from me? Right, because I know how she feels about other stuff and other people. I said, but it was important for me to know because if I was wrong and I ever, if I, if I ever did anything or said anything to cause rejection in my daughter's heart, I wanted to make sure that I was the first one to apologize to her, mm -hmm. right? Because none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. Right. And our parents did the best that they could with what they knew. Absolutely. And unfortunately, it wasn't much, right? Mm -hmm. They were taught, they were from old school. They, a, a lot of them were living in poverty, living in the country with very minimum clothing, food, mm -hmm. um, just anything, right? So they did the best that they could. They made sure that they worked hard, that they provided the roof over the head, the food on the table, the clothes in the back, but they were too busy raising too many kids. They didn't have the time to love on them, to right. embrace them, right. to listen to them, right. right? And so, as you're sharing about the root, I, and the Lord showed to me about the month, that this month was rejection, I'm, I called my daughter immediately, and I said, did you ever feel rejected by me growing up as a child? And to God be the Lord, she said, no. 
She said, um, you were always there for me. You always spoke with me. You always listened to me. Um, one of the things that her dad used to say to me is, um, why do you talk to her like she's an adult? Because I always wanted to make sure that I didn't baby her. I wanted to make sure that she was um, listening. You know, when she would say, mommy, I would look at her in the eyes. And I think that our parents never could look at us in the eyes. Our parents said, because I said no and that's it. Yes, they didn't give yes. us an explanation, that was it. right? But with my daughter, when she would, um, when I would say, babe, what's going on? Or how are you feeling? Or whatever the subject is, I would say, look at my eyes. Let's talk, right? And I always made sure that I took the time to listen to her, to make sure that I gave her attention, to make sure that even though I was going to school, I was working, I was very busy, I still made sure that she had friends over. I'm not trying to make this about me, but it was a part of rejection, right? Mm -hmm. Still made sure that she had fun time, that you know some friends or family members would take her and make sure that she didn't miss out on being a child. You know, I was a single mom for, um, for a little while, and so I didn't want her to miss out. I know that my parents did the best that they could with us, and that we were always surrounded by family, but again, people were always busy. Yeah. And that's the problem today. We're always too busy to yeah. take the time to listen. It's not just hear a person, a little kid say, blah, 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 blah. It's about listening to what, what is behind that blah, blah, blah. Yeah. What is behind that behavior of acting up? Why are you, you know, behaving this way? Why are you saying those things? Has anybody touched you? Has anybody said anything to you? I don't think back then, I know back then and even today, we're not taking the time, many parents are not taking the time to listen to our children. Um, and, and, and Raquel, I know that you have two children, you know. So I'm sorry, going back to my daughter, she said, no, I never felt that from you growing up. I did feel that from you when you started your ministry because then everything became, you know, the ministry, the pastor, you know, um, all these services. And I said, okay, you're an adult. Not that that doesn't matter. I still take out the time and I listen to her, but she's in a different place, you know. And even to today, I would say, how are you doing? How's it going? And it's not to be nosy, but it's to be able to listen to what's behind that voice, right? What's coming through it. But Raquel, you have two children. I know that these lovely ladies don't have any children yet, but in the name of Jesus, they will. Mm -hmm. And they'll get to experience the, the blessing and the beauty of being a parent, right? But Raquel, you have a son and a daughter. I do. Um, Jonathan, mm -hmm. who's 27, and my daughter, who's 25. Um, and as you were saying, um, and I'm listening to what you're saying, you're trying to better. Right with your children what you didn't have right. with your parents. And that, that was one of my goals. Um, I remember praying and I said, Lord, teach me mm -hmm. how to raise my children. You know, again, talking to them like if they were an adult. I didn't want to sugarcoat anything. Mm -hmm. I told them, you know what, always come to me with the truth because at least with the truth I can deal with it. Come with me to lie, you know, that's, that's mm -hmm. what things, you know, become a, a distrust. And so um, I remember starting to practice um, having family meetings, you know, when we needed to discuss stuff, you know. Um, so even when I needed to discuss, I always brought it up. We had a family meeting. And then I found, okay, we, I need a family meeting, you know, for my, my kids. And so we would sit down and we would discuss, you know. And I know that wasn't something that we practiced mm -hmm. in our yeah. house. We didn't have family meetings. It's like just saying, you know, no, because I said no, and that was it. Yeah. You know, um, that was the way. So, yeah, you try to do different and do better with your kids um, so that things of this nature don't happen, you know. Um, and so I, I've never asked that question, but now that I'm, yeah. and my daughter is back in town, I'm going to ask her. I don't know if she's watching, but um, I'm going to ask her um, if, she, if I ever did anything that she felt rejected um, about. So, and I'm going to ask my son as well. But I think that is something that we do need to own to it right. and validate it. It's very important to validate, you know, because um, like you said, we're not perfect, but it is important to own it. 
It sure, it sure is. I know that um, it's funny that you say, I remember when I was um, pregnant from my daughter, I always prayed, I said, God, help me to be the mother you want me to be. To, to guide her the way you want me to guide her. I instill the fear of God. Always pray with her, pray for her. Um, and I would always talk to her about everything, anything and everything, sex, drugs. You know, our parents never talked about us. I mean, about that. No. God forbid. Um, mom, what, what, what does, um, you know, uh, what does sex mean? Or how does it start? Or when can I do it? Or how about having a drink? Or, you know, smoking no. a joint? Or... That those are conversations that my parents never had with me, but I always made sure to have them with my daughter. Even as a young child, I said to her, I want you to come talk to me about it. Anything you want to know, I'm going to be honest with you. And I said to her, you could tell me the truth. I'm not going to make a face. I'm not going to make it be angry with you. I'm going to respect you for telling me the truth. I may not like it, but I'm going to respect you and acknowledge it. Now, if you lie to me, I, there's a problem, right? And so we know that we all go through different situations in life. You know, we've been divorced, right? And we go, sometimes we'll through a divorce, we tend to put our personal feelings or we get, um, you know, extra uh, uh, emotional or we're trying to figure things out. And in those times, that we as parents, if we go through a divorce, we're hurting, you know, we're angry, we're grieving, we're going through a lot of different emotions that we may not realize that we put our children in the back burner and we reject them. So it's important for us to make sure that we are, um, that we are not rejecting our children because our children are gonna remember every little single detail of what we did didn't do what we said we didn't say and they're gonna throw it in our face you know oh you have time for your friends you don't have time for me right oh you have time you know to go on vacation and you did this and you did that but you didn't do it with me so it's important to not ignore whether it's our children and we're gonna have other guest speakers you know today um Catherine is talking about how this affected her relationship with her mom and her siblings. Mm -hmm. So this rejection has caused consequences mm -hmm. because yes. she didn't speak her voice. Mm -hmm. She tried and she was shut. She, the door was shut on her. Literally. It was shut on her. Yeah. And so that caused a lot of pain, a lot of shame, which caused her to be lame. She couldn't walk forward to the God-given destiny that God had for her. Right. Instead, she walked back, backwards and had all these consequences of all this more pain added onto her rejection. Correct. And right? I, yes, and like to this day, um, it's hard for me to talk in front of people. I, I get a physical reaction, my neck turns red. Um, I just wanted to share that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, it's, you know, it's a horrible thing if it's not dealt with at that moment. Um, serious consequences. Like I said, I'm very thankful to God be the glory that you know I didn't end up in the streets um, doing something that was uh, illegal against the law. You know, um, because rebellion is real. Hurt and rebellion is real. You know, that goes after the root of the rejection. Mm -hmm. Now, moving forward, what would you say um, you would like moving forward after today? What would you say you would like to do to be able for you to heal? Because right now, this is not about your mom healing. This is not about you being angry with your mom. It's not about rejecting her or blaming her. But what would you like to see done now? Or what would you like to happen between you and your mom now that you've been able to express? Mm -hmm. What would you do different okay. with the knowledge you have now? I would have waited and, no, actually, I was going to say I would have waited until after the holiday, but if I knew it was going to happen because of the following year, as it did, um, I, I would have spoken up one-on-one -on -one to my mom um, in our own house, because it wasn't at our house, um, and, and I would tell her, you know, I'm uncomfortable because, you know, this person does this when we are downstairs in the basement, and it's it's just really not fair that he's telling you guys one thing, but it's really not that downstairs. Why don't you guys come downstairs and check it out for yourselves, you know, like somewhere along those lines. Would you, um, 
would you want to have this discussion with your mom? You know, one of the things that I think I really truly believe that is important for us to do and we don't do enough, right? Is to say, you know what, I'm coming to talk to you, not to make you feel bad, not to blame you, not, but I'm talking to you to let you know how I felt because I need healing for me. I right? would reject it. You don't know that. You can try, right? Mm -hmm. We're never gonna know unless we try. It's important. I know that God has given me some assignments of some people that I need to confront, right? Not, I forgave in them, but the Lord says you still need to confess. The Bible says confess to one another. It's not that we go tell the whole world like we're doing right now, right? <laughs> but but whoever you're having an issue with, confessing is not, please listen, confessing is not about me saying, you know what, I did this wrong, I said that wrong. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's a two-way street. Confessing is always saying, you know what, if I was wrong in hurting you, I'm sorry. If I was wrong in being a daughter that I shouldn't have been, I'm sorry. But I need to tell you how I'm feeling, how this situation made me feel. What were the consequences, the decisions I made because I was full of anger and rejection? Let them know that this is not about them blaming them, but it's about you having your deliverance. And that's what confession is really meaning. You know, um, I had a situation where the Lord said, I need you to confess with you. I need you to speak to your daughter. And I was like, no, God, she already said, you know, I'm sorry. And he said, no, I need you to confess. How did it make you feel? What did you go through? Because in the back of my mind, the enemy will always say, oh, but she's going to do it again. Oh, but she did this. Right. Oh, but she's really not sorry, right? So it had nothing to do with her. It had to do with my healing process, right? So for everyone that is watching out there today, this is what I would say to you. And I, I want all of you, you know, to share. But this is my, what I believe is true. What, what I know is true without a shadow of a doubt. In order for us to get healing, our parents may, may not listen to us. Our family members may, may not listen to us, right? But the truth is, we, we forgive people, not because they deserve it, but we forgive them because we deserve it. And we confess to them what we're feeling so that we can, from right there, uproot it and let it go. Say what you have to say, close the chapter and be done. And that's what I believe we should do we don't do it because we're afraid that we're going to get rejected again we're afraid because what are they going to think about us we're afraid because we were not taught to do these things we're afraid for whatever reason or the time lapse. the time right it's been so long why talk about that now well because i'm still carrying it it's still hurting me right we want to be healed this is the process. This is why together we are one. Together we are one. We're, if there is no together, there is no one to love. But together, we can make a difference one day at a time, one person at a time. And that's why we're here together to share this. Not to put anything, anybody down, not to make them feel bad, not to embarrass them, but to know that there is healing, that the bleeding can stop so that it doesn't go on to the next generation, so that we can all learn from it, right? And apply it to our lives and to the life of the loved ones that are around us, so that we don't become like it, but that we learn from it. Does that make sense? Mm, yes. What would you say, Alina? That, um, you know, that I believe, I know for myself that it's easier and, and you know, maybe Raquel and, and Essie would like to share. It would be easier for me to say, you know what? This is what I'm feeling. I want you to know that I love you. I appreciate you. I know that you did the best that you could. But I need to share this with you because I need healing. I need deliverance. I need the bleeding to stop internally. Because that's what happens. We bleed yeah. internally. And so when does it stop? And a lot of times we don't even realize that we start bringing that onto our children or to our nieces and nephews and they're hurting or our grandchildren, right? And so when does it stop? So for me, I believe wholeheartedly that part of the healing and deliverance process is being able to speak to the person that you had the problem with if they're still here, right? Talk to them. What are you thinking? This is, this is what I felt. Raquel, what would you say? 
I can understand where Catherine's coming from, mm -hmm. um, where she feels that she will be rejected again. Um, and that is, that could be an end result. It is true, you know. Um, your mom may not want to accept um, what you have to say. But I go back to what Michelle is saying. This is about you. Right. You know. Um, and when you at least speak of, because you said you weren't able to even articulate what you wanted your mom to hear. Mm -hmm. um, one thing is that the person never heard your words. Another thing is that they heard what you said. And your mom will hear what you said now. Whether she accepts or not, that's on her. That's that's not you know that's not the point. The point is that you need healing. Mm -hmm. You need to be validated. Mm -hmm. You need to be acknowledged. Mm -hmm. Okay, that pain that you carry mm -hmm. needs to be expressed. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you know that you said it, mm -hmm. and that's what matters. That you can walk away from that. I would pray and hope that your mom would embrace and have a new beginning because that's what it's all about a new beginning come up with a clean slate mm -hmm. you know be able to walk away from that but more importantly that you come out and you know that you said something mm -hmm. you understand and that your healing process starts mm -hmm. okay and as long as you know in your mind yeah there's a 50 percent chance mom ain't gonna accept it but there's another 50% chance that she mm -hmm. may. But either way, however you walk away with, you're fine with that. Mm -hmm. And that you're able to. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Amen. Alina, what would you say? Back to me. So, um, sometimes I have problems with words. Sometimes I have problems actually saying what it is I need to say. I, could su I would suggest if that's an issue, write it up. Mm. Like, write a letter, old school, <laughs> write a letter, and you may think of things to say in that letter that you wouldn't necessarily think when you're actually speaking. Because you can actually go in, in that, into yourself mm. to get exactly what it is you need. Right. Right. So you can write that letter and then go to her, say, Mom, we need to have a little conversation with them. Actually start as a conversation, I want you to read this letter. Mm -hmm. And then you can ask me questions and I can answer and I can speak to you and like we can develop on what it is that letter said. And that could be another way of getting everything out and getting to the root of it. And that's a really good analogy. That's a really great way because it's true. Not everybody knows how to express their feelings. Not everyone has a big mouth like me, right? <laughs> um, not everyone is bold. Um, and and some of us, like like Catherine said, you know, she that made her quiet out. Whereas me, I'd be like blabbering it out. Whereas um, Alina, she she wouldn't know what to say through her voice, but she knows what to write because she can articulate it better in writing. How about you, Essie? Uh, where do I start? So while you guys were speaking, I was just thinking again back to a conversation I, my girlfriends and I had and I had Friday night, we had a little girls' night and we were just talking about our parents and how we're becoming more like our mothers the older we get. And I was talking to one of my homegirls and I said, I think we need to fix your relationship with your mother because they get into a lot of arguments. And I was like I, I said I told her that a lot of times when moms and daughters get into arguments because the moms see themselves, their past selves and their daughters, and they get angry about it instead of um, approaching and letting their daughters know about it. So I, I mean, when you guys were talking, I also thought to myself that rejection, when, when you reject your child, it, it, it itself. So in your case with your mom, for example, you said, uh, you, you, I, don't, I don't know if I should mention this, but you did say she went through something similar in her, in her lifetime. Right, I found out later on. And later on. Mm -hmm. And because she rejected her feelings about that situation, it ultimately came back to you. Generational. Generational. Right. And you're the generation that breaks that. So mm -hmm. hopefully, with the grace of God and his help, mm -hmm. you, you do not reflect that with your daughter as well. Mm -hmm. So. Amen. 
I just believe that you should talk to your mom about it. I know you have that fear that she's going to reject me, but sometimes you need to remember that mom, and let's just, let's just say your mom's name is Jessica. Mom, mm -hmm. regardless of her being mom, she's also Jessica. She's mm -hmm. also another human being. Mm -hmm. So don't take that mom aspect out of your, your mind and just say, Jessica, sit with me and let's have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And maybe that could help with your relationship with your mom. That's really great, Essie. You being the youngest panelist here today, right? Um, what would you take from all of this? You shared with us that you and, and your friends have also gone through this experience of being molested, which is another topic and we'll bring at another time. But in learning and listening to all of this, do you feel, did you ever talk about it or voice it? Because, or you just shung and put it under the rug or, or stuck it in the closet? I remember in my childhood, I, I was molested from the time I was like five years old up to I was about nine. Uh, and I remember I mentioned it to my grandmother and she was actually concerned about it, but I could sense like there was a lot of like tension with her that like she wanted me to let her know who it was and I was afraid that I'll get that family member in trouble so I shut my mouth. Mm. And ever since then I haven't told anybody about it, I never expressed it to anybody. Uh, until my, my sister expressed her situation with me, and I told her about mine. And, you know, hearing that from my sister and also hearing from my friends similar uh, similar stories, family members or people that are close to the family and not speak out because we don't want to get them in trouble, it made me realize that this is an, uh, this is an epidemic that's going right. on amongst young women. Yeah. And if if we're not going to talk about it, who else will? And how do we heal? How do we heal? How do we have, we're not going to address the cut on your body, it's only going to grow bigger and bigger and bacteria and vitamin, you know, all that kind of stuff is going <laughs> to, you're going to die from it, you know? Right. So one thing from your whole conversation is that it, life is a cycle, it repeats itself, unless you actually address it, it repeats itself. Right. So you got to like reach out, even though you're embarrassed by it, even though you feel humiliated by it, you have, or are afraid of the rejection, you have to still reach out. Keep reaching out to people that you trust and ultimately God will use somebody to speak to you and help you come out from that darkness, that pit that you're in. Right. So, you know, I, I know that we've shared a lot, we've talked about a lot, a little bit about everything, but one thing I do want to, I do want to, um, I really want all of us to take from this, right, is that rejection is real and that we need to address it, that we should not be afraid. If our family member doesn't want to listen and, and they don't want to acknowledge us, okay. Then we're going to go somewhere else, right? We're going to go to counseling. If they, if they can't help us, well, first of all, we should really go to God. He'll direct our steps, right? But not everybody has that kind of relationship with the Lord. So we need to address these situations because we want the bleeding to stop. We don't want to continue to feel rejected, right? Or neglected. We want to feel loved. Because honestly, there's two things that we all want in this world. And that's to be loved and to know that everything's going to be okay. But how can we know about love and know that everything's going to be okay if we are bleeding and feeling rejected and we can't go and speak to somebody about it, right? We've been all hurt by family members, by coworkers, by people from the church, people from our neighborhood. It doesn't matter. But what matters is that we have a voice and that we do matter, especially to the Lord. And God wants us all to heal. He wants us all for the bleeding to stop, for the sixth cycle to stop. Because if it doesn't, if, if we don't talk about it, then that same person is going to go molest someone else. And it's not okay. It's not okay. If they did something wrong, then there are consequences and that's on them. Right? We're not trying to judge anybody. We're not trying to be God. We're not trying to condemn or persecute. But wrong is wrong. And it needs to be spoken. And so in order for us to get healed and to be whole and to get to the destiny that God has for us, we need to be able to talk about these conversations. There are therapists out there. There are, unfortunately, right now we don't, uh, the website is will be under construction. So we are going to have a website that is going to give you links to to all the conversations we have, I mean, links of resources, I'm sorry, links of the resources to give you of the different conversations that we have so that you know that you have somewhere to go, 
so that you know that you're not alone. If you can't speak to a family member, you can speak to a therapist. There's other organizations and ministries that will help you, that will give you tools, that will walk with you. And that's what we are. We're here to walk with you, not in front of you, not behind you, but to let you know that you do matter and that you do have a voice. And God wants his daughters to be healed. On our webs on our Facebook page, we're going to provide you some links, some information, right, about rejection so that you can look into it, so that you can start getting some help. But more than anything, so that you can start a process and not to continue to bottle it inside. Because God wants greater for you. Because you deserve it. Just know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Right? And that the Lord loves you and he will meet you wherever you're at. And so all of us have a story. All of us have a situation. All of us have been rejected. And today we talked about Catherine feeling rejected with her mom. And next week we're going to have someone else with that felt rejected by someone else, a family member. We don't know what it is, but you're going to find out if you meet us here next Sunday at 3 o'clock. Lady, would you like to um, share anything else? We're here for you. We're here for you, right? So again, I am Michelle. I'm Catherine. I'm Essie. I'm Alina. And I'm Raquel. And, and together, together we, we are one. one. Thank you. Thank we'll you. see you next Sunday. Bye-bye at 3 p.m.